Well, for the Atlanta Hawks, it was not supposed to be this way. After all, best record in the Eastern Conference all season long, 60 wins, Coach of the Year, Mike Budenholzer, four All-Stars, including the NBA's three-point shooting leader in terms of percentage, Kyle Korver with 49%, and a team that went undefeated in the month of January, perfect 17-0. Doesn't really matter now. After all, we've seen uh, so far in these playoffs that Atlanta's not the same team. They struggled a little bit against um, you know, the Brooklyn Nets. Second round, you know, if John Wall doesn't get hurt for the Wizards, who knows how that series turns out, but they... You know, the Hawks survived that one in six. And so far, games one and two, it's been all Cleveland. And, yeah, LeBron James has definitely had his hand into the Cleveland success, and you knew he would. But it's been more than just that. And they, in part, you know, have dictated how Atlanta has played this series. But also, too, remember that the Hawks not only were one of the highest scoring teams in the NBA and one of the best shooting percentage teams in the NBA, but also they rebounded the ball extremely well. But the first two games... Cleveland combined has out-rebounded the Hawks by 20. And, you know, third quarter of this last game, Hawks only uh, hit seven shots. Seven out of um, seven out of uh, 22 for a total of 32%. Not good enough in the playoffs against anybody, especially the Cavaliers who made Atlanta pay. This game was, you know, fairly up for grabs after half. Cleveland had the lead, but a slim lead. And then LeBron James, like he does so often in his career, you know, saves his best for the second half. In third quarter, he had 11 points in that third quarter. Now, Damari Carroll, you know, the outstanding player for the Hawks who had the knee sprain in game one, gave it a go in game number three. Played over 30 minutes, which is more than what I thought he would play. And a one-on-one against James, you know, pretty much, you know, held his own, okay? 5 of 13 versus LeBron. Um, LeBron got 12 of his 30 against Carroll. But LeBron figured out um, that there are other ways that you can – uh, beat a team and win, okay? Other ways that you can find weaknesses. And Atlanta was collapsing quite a bit on LeBron. If you, if you watched game two the other night, um, they were, you know, double teaming. When LeBron would get ready to shoot, they would collapse on him. And LeBron found wide open guys. How big is this stat in the game? Three-pointers, Cleveland had 12 of them. 12 threes in the game, 40% from three-point range. Atlanta had only six threes. Didn't even shoot 30%. Maybe that was the biggest difference maker in the game. But also, too, we mentioned Atlanta had the 60 wins this year. One of the biggest reasons why they had those 60 is because they were up-tempo, okay? An up-tempo team, and we've seen in the playoffs more times than not, and this has been the case since I was watching the NBA 30-something years ago, that high-scoring teams, the high-scoring teams in the league, simply, um, for the most part, don't score as many points in the playoffs. One of the biggest reasons is because of familiarity. The opposition has watched a lot of tape on you, and they've played you, you know, at least twice, okay? In the case of the conference, the conference meeting, three or four times. And so despite what success Atlanta had against Cleveland in the regular season means nothing now because, you know, the Cavaliers know what they can do, what they can't do, and that's been a blueprint for them. Um, you know, the, the Hawks have been around worse than me at times, too, because, you know, we see Horford, we'll see Carroll, or we'll see Millsap, you know, the, the, the three post players for the Atlanta Hawks. You know, when they get the ball down low, um, rather than challenge the guy that's on them, and sometimes it's a size mismatch, the Hawks will kick it back out. They, and they weren't doing that on a regular basis early in the year. They're doing that now, and they're slowing themselves down. And Atlanta is not a slow-down type team, okay? They're just simply not. They don't function as well, and at times... You know, they're not even running plays in their own sets on offense. And and that's really been the disappointing part. Now, part of it, you know, Cleveland's been a, the aggressive team. But, but at two, you know, the Hawks aren't playing that brand of basketball that got them to 16-22 this season. That made them a number one seed. And defensively, um, it's going to seem crazy. But, you know, not so much double teaming on LeBron. Because, you know, with, with Kyrie Irving not playing a game two, that should have been advantage Atlanta. With no Kevin Love, that should have been a, a, an advantage in that regard for anybody, you know, playing Cleveland. And by the way, with um, you know, with uh, Irving not playing in game number two, Atlanta should have really been able to have success. That that didn't happen, and it seems silly to say, but with Matthew Dellavedova on the court for Cleveland, uh, LeBron actually scores more points because he gets more touches. Dellavedova, by the way, 
Not a bad game. He had 11.6 rebounds, four assists, but, but he knows his role. He's not a 20, 25, 30 point per guy, per type point guard, okay? He's more of a facilitator, and, you know, defensively, they're in better hands with Dillavidova than they are with Irving anyway. That's why I don't think they missed a beat for the most part. You know, you're going to have to have Irving if you're Cleveland, assuming that Golden State can get past Houston. That's still a long assumption, you know, because they're still, you know, at least with Houston in both games against Golden State, Houston at least had an opportunity, okay? And Houston fans will tell you they should be up 2 nothing, not down 0-2. For Atlanta, there's nobody out there, not even the biggest diehard Hawks fan, that should tell you that this series should be 1-1 or 2-0 Atlanta. If so, what the heck are they smoking? This has been all Cleveland. So, assuming that the Warriors, again, a long assumption that they play the Cavs, you're going to have to have Irving out there. You're going to have to have Kyrie Irving out there because, you know, the Warriors um, ha have scores that will that will match or surpass anybody, okay? And I know that Atlanta has had injuries, okay? So is Cleveland. And Cleveland seems to be playing pretty good basketball right now. So, I think offensively, we'll see if, if the uh, – if, if, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Atlanta has to score 110 to win, but they need basically to to get more offensive production. Don't have your guards penetrate to the bucket so many times, okay? That right there puts your forwards out of position, and then next thing you know, Cleveland's going the other way. Look at fast break points, by the way, for Atlanta. This last game, only eight, okay? They got to get more players involved. That's not happening right now, and the bottom line is, You've got some good forwards. you got a good center. Use them, okay? Um, not Like I said, I know that with, with, the, with the Hawks, they've had some injuries to every member of their starting five currently, or at least one part during the season, including Kyle Korver, third quarter of the uh, game uh, Friday night. Um, game two in the third quarter um, ends up spraining his ankle, doesn't return. But, but the Korver hasn't looked like himself anyway, even before the ankle injury. Um, Horford can play, okay? You got Al Horford. He seems to be handling the um, the dislocated pinky injury fairly well. Um, Millsap's got to step up. And we will see, you know, it, it, to me, it, it seems almost impossible for Atlanta to come back and win this thing, okay? You got to play games three and four at the you know, Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland Sunday and Tuesday. And if you can't win at home, these first two games, how are you going to pull it off? You make adjustments, okay? You make adjustments. You don't collapse on LeBron. At least you don't do it all the time and get burned for um, for 10 threes, which is what Cleveland made. If you don't count LeBron James, LeBron had two to make a total of 12. Bottom line is you're going to have to respect the other players on that Cleveland team. They may not have any all-stars out there now because, you know, because of the Irving injury, and who knows if he'll come back in game three. And, of course, you haven't had Kevin Love for a while because of his injury issue with the uh, dislocated shoulder. But just because those guys aren't all-stars doesn't mean they can't play. It's the NBA, best athletes in the world. So, you know, Clinton won the game the other night by 12 and held Atlanta to 82 points. Yeah. Not just a little trouble, but a lot of trouble for the Hawks. And that score was misleading because, you know, we saw the reserves come in the game and it made this final score closer. Um, it made the game seem closer than it was because Cleveland was up by 20 in the fourth quarter. And have this thing in the back. So, LeBron's proven one thing, okay? If you didn't know it by now, you already knew he was the greatest player in the NBA. He's been that way for a while. But he's one of the smartest, too, and he knows how to utilize his teammates. And just like Michael Jordan in the 90s when the Bulls won six championships in eight years, Jordan trusted his teammates, and they delivered. And we're seeing so far with, with the likes of Della Vadova, you know, and Shepard, who had 16 the other night, and also Mozgov, who had 10. And even though J.R. Smith didn't have a big game, he still had 9 points. And James Jones, the veteran, he had 9. The overall team production, it, it favors Cleveland. And until Atlanta can, can get back to looking like the Atlanta of old and defensively, you know, clamp up on the other guys too, I don't see this series going back to Atlanta for Game 5. I just don't. Could be wrong, and I've been wrong many times. Going to have to take a 180 degree turn, and right now, I don't see Atlanta turning the tables on the Cavs. By the way, Game Three Western Conference will be on Saturday night tonight. Houston will try to get back in their series against Golden State. The Warriors up two nothing. Truth, justice, and the NBA. We're out. Bye.